Good evening, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Praise the Lord. Please let's settle down as we commence today's program. Welcome to the service of songs for our dearly beloved wife, mother, sister, friend, confident, confident, sister Okwe, Yemi, Abimbola, Akin Elure. We are going to be starting today's program with the opening prayer, which will be taken by Pastor Shino Alabi. Shall we rise, please? Because you're the one that reigns in all situations and circumstances. You have won the victory on the cross when you resurrected. And for that reason, we are here gathered this hour to celebrate your daughter, our sister, a mother that you have called into glory. Holy Spirit of the living God, this gathering is all about you. Glorify God the Son, glorify yourself, glorify God the Father, and bless your people like never before, Father. At the end of this meeting, we'll be able to say, indeed, 
the Lord has come down. And that will be our testimony in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Thank you, sir. The next item on our program will be the praise and worship session, which will be handled by the lively stones. Hallelujah. Just go ahead and give God all the praise because truly he deserves all our worship. Amen. You are seated on the throne. Holy is our God. Hallelujah. Amen. You reign forevermore. There is no one else like you.
Please be seated, ladies and gentlemen. The next item on will be the Bible reading by Tundu Akinyelure, after which we'll have the very first hymn of the day, When Peace Like a River. Can we have Tundu Akinyelure? Blessed be the name of the Lord at all times. Today we'll be reading Isaiah chapter 57, verse 1 to 2. The righteous perish, and no one takes it to heart. The devout are taken away, and no one understands that the righteous are taken away to be spared from evil. Those who walk uprightly enter into peace. They find rest as they lie in death. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our first hymn, which is on page four, When Peace Like a River.
Thank you, Lively Stones. The next item on our program will be the tributes. And the following groups will be giving tributes. The Federal Government College, JOS. That's for tribute one. Tribute two will be close friends. And tribute three will be handmaidens. Please, can the representative of Federal Government just come up? And the representatives of the close friends and handmaidens be on standby. And please, we only have five minutes for each group. Okay. Okay, well, for Joss, we'll be having Mr. Deji Erinle. Um, good evening, everybody. My name is Deji Erinle. I'm representing the 1989 set of the Federal Government College, Joss, where Bimbo was an alumni. This is a tribute to Abimbola Okoyemi Akinyeluri Ni Fajusibe, popularly called Bimbo Faj. Our paths crossed in October 1983 when we resumed as Form 1 students at the Federal Government College JOS. On the day, on that day this year, on that day that year, I mean on today that year, we had barely spent three weeks in secondary school. Bimbo was a member of Sherry House, which is somewhat coincidental considering the fair nature of our skin. Yellow, which was yellow. Her house color is reflected in the shirt that some of us are wearing today. I had not seen Bimbo since we left school in 19, 1989, not until 2018, when we met at a friend's birthday party. She had not changed, save for the fact that she was looking more matured, but still had youthful looks. We had subsequently remained close thereafter. Bimbo had strength and consistency of character. She had always been the quiet, easygoing girl who would not take talk, except it was extremely necessary. She also had a humorous side, which would occasionally chip into conversations from time to time. A classmate of ours described Bimbo as an angel in human form who transfers the face of the earth. And this must have been as a result of her easygoing nature, slow to speak, slow to anger. In fact, I can't even remember the time I ever saw Bimbo get angry. Another classmate described her as beautiful, smooth, neat, warm, and an enviable aura of calmness all around. Bimbo was so spoken, and she had, um, she had everybody's well-being at heart. She would call from time to time to find out how you were faring. She would tell you, you need to pay attention to your health and all of that. She had you at heart. It would seem as if the occasion of my 50th birthday celebration in July was where she came to bid us farewell because there were quite a number of our classmates there. She was full of life and radiant on that day, and I can't believe that we're talking in the past right now. The pictures we took on that day will be forever etched in our memories, you know, because virtually everybody that saw being born that day, you know, she created an impression. In fact, when I, when, when I sent her picture to my mom, my mom had called me and was like, am I sure of what I'm saying? You know, but that's the way God wants it. As a set, we are so glad our paths crossed. We love you, but God loves you more. As a good soldier of Christ that you were, you have run the race and fought the good fight of faith and we believe you are resting in the bosom of the Lord. As I said, Bimbo was an epitome 
of love, an epitome of humility. Somebody who was slow to anger. She had the talk, but when she, when she spoke, he knew there were words of wisdom that were coming out of her mouth. She will be sorely missed by all of us. And we pray that uh, God continues to strengthen and comfort the family at this point in time. And we pray that God uh, would cause us to apply our hearts to wisdom in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you and God bless. Thank you, sir. The next tribute will be given by close friends, and we'll first have Mrs. Uh, Bimbo Ekweme, after which we'll have Folake Mishoreton via video. And today is a sad day for me, because I can't believe I'm giving a eulogy for Cody will be for her fifth yet. But God knows best. I've known Bimbo now for 25 years. And I got introduced to her by Lara Dijumo, who is no longer with us as well. Bimbo is an amazing woman and a special one at that. For those that know Bimbo, you know she loves to sing. Um, she loves to worship. That's her, her, her. She gets a high on just worshiping and praising God. Bimbo lived a life of impact. Um, I miss you already. The last two weeks, I've gone back to listen to the very numerous voice notes that you left um, for me. And some of them I would laugh, some of them I would cry. Um, and I told myself that I'm going to try and make this a cheerful um, one and to just focus on the things that were great about you. And I also want to use the opportunity to thank you. Thank you for being a deliberate parent. Thank you for being a lover. You loved your Choco baby so much. You loved the boys so much. And you showed love to those that you called yours. Thank you for teaching me to worship God. Remember our last conversation was on Thanksgiving fast. Thank you for teaching me how to you know, praise him genuinely. I remember a time when one of my twin boys was doing his hair and I struggled with that. And it was you that taught me to have an appreciation of who my child was, regardless of their hair, using obviously Todu and Dido as a reference point. My son loves you to bits. <laughs> You're one of those people who call the cool aunties. Everyone that I know that is a teenager can talk and speak to you freely. I'm thankful that you had the opportunity to spend seven months with Todo and Didu in Canada last year. You were so happy. You went on and on and on about the time you spent with them. Thank you for caring so much. You ministered to me on all levels. You were a woman of faith, and for those that know you, you had this unflinching faith even till the end. Thank you for fulfilling purpose. Um, I know you're watching us now and smiling. And, and, and you finished your assignment. So in reality, I think the message for all of us is we all need to sit back and reflect and think about our purpose. Um, what are we doing to ensure that we die empty? What are we doing to ensure that we impact and make a difference like Bimbo did? I listened and I read Bimbo's testimonies and everybody was consistent about her in terms of the love she gave, um, in terms of her belief in God, in terms of impacting people. You're a great person. You were a great person. Um, I'm wearing green today <laughs> because I know that is one of your favorite colors. Um, and I'm going to leave my hair out more, <laughs> like you always say. Um, thank 
thank you for being a friend. I promise that I won't cry. And I can't believe I'm even doing that now. God bless you, my friend. And sleep well till we meet again. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I met Bimbo in 1990. I call her Um We got into Ife exactly in 1990, and um, we joined the Christ Love Fellowship. That was actually where I met her, and um, we were in the same choir called Praise Creation. And um, we're all in the same hall in as Jambites, a Mozambique hall. And Opemi was that Jambite everybody wanted to know, so pretty, so cheerful, fun-loving. She had an unusual combination of beauty, brains, godliness, and humility, which is very scarce with a lot of ladies, you know. That she was not high up, you know, she was friends with everybody, both in her um, faculty and in fellowship um, she everybody knows that she loves to sing 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 and worship was very popular with bimbo i remember the particular we used to go to different cities to sing or minister when we're in ife and there was a particular time we went to lagos i don't know how many of you guys can remember that we went to yaba baptist church i'm not sure what ministration that was and then, of course, this traditional drummers came, and then we began to dance, dance, dance. That was Ronero stuff. We, we call her Ronero. And Kunle was there that day. I don't know if Kunle remembers. And they were not even really, they were family friends, but they were really talking. You know that stage where you are still everybody posing for each other? And she was telling Edith and I, look at that Kunle guy. You know, we know each other. And um, we're there checking Kunle out in the middle of our administrations and things like that. And um, from those days, um, of Allen Avenue. I was usually at the house to Iju and um, all of that. Um, Ronero um, would always, when we left school, I moved to Abuja. And um, I remember just before I moved, I got married two years before her. And I, she, as her usual custom was, each time I was in Lagos, she would make time to come and see me. And then she came to see me on that trip, and we're talking about pregnancy, and she was like, oh, how come you're not yet pregnant? And I'm like, oh, um, I'm not ready, my family planning method and all that. And I was like, oh, I thought you would have stayed. I, I've stopped using it, but since, but since then, the baby still hasn't come. And I said to her, better go and take off whatever you're using. And she followed my advice, and the next thing, she was pregnant for Didun, and then she was upset with me because she didn't know it would happen so soon. And then I remember Dido was born in May, and then my son was born in June. And um, both of us have three boys, and um, the boys in Canada as well, you know, so similar patterns. And over the summer, the, um, one of the boys had wanted to come and spend the summer with them, but there was no space in the house. So Bimba would always make her first to look for me each time I come to Lagos. That's the caring person she's always been very accommodating very fun loving um very trendy yes we all know her um her and my husband tease each other okay me and all of that on her birthday was still you know cheering up and singing for her this last birthday not knowing that that was going to actually be the last um today i just want to pray and pray and pray for mommy olu bumi Pastor Toin, Wale, Kunle, Todumidum, and Didun, that God in his mercy will uphold, will carry, will preserve, will sustain, that his peace will surround you. Um, being a pastor, I haven't pastored for almost 25 years now. I'm used to being strong for everyone. The day I called Kunle to confirm if this was true, unfortunately for me, I was at I was outside, and for the first time in my life, I didn't think of being strong for anyone. This was just about, I, I didn't even know I knew how to will. I was like, no, this can't be possible. But in all things, we give God thanks because he's really, really faithful. 
We just in absentia want to celebrate your Kwayemi again and thank you for your very fond memories. Thank you for all that you have given and all you've left behind for us to learn from. We pray that the Lord will continue to uphold and sustain all that you have left behind in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, ma'am. The next tribute will be given by the Anne Medins and it will be taken by Pastor Shiju Iluyomade. Good evening, everyone. My feet feels like jelly. I'm shaking. It's so unreal. Bimbo. <laughs> Bimbo. It's as though I could call you back to life. I've been waiting for someone to tell me it didn't happen. I saw her. I did see her. And we sang a very beautiful song. Funnily enough, I was the only one who knew this song, an oldies. And she just came to worship at the hand meetings, as she normally does. We jumped on ourselves, everybody excited, and then we started singing. I'll never leave you. I'll never lie. I'll never be untrue. I'll never give you reasons to cry. And she sang, I'll be devoted to you. Kuli, I believe that song was for you. I met Bimbo through all of my siblings, all of them, Kule and Larry, my dear brother, my beloved brother, has gone to be with the Lord. They were classmates right from kindergarten, and I've never seen such a friendship. They upheld it, they would have their tips, they would laugh and roll on the floor. And then, Ronero, once she comes in, we all shout, Ronero. A lot of people assumed Bimbo was my sister. A lot of people, even my castmates from Queen's College, thought she was my sister. Someone saw her somewhere on Amadou Beloui, a castmate I hadn't seen in years. And she said, Shiju, oh, I just saw your sister in our land. I said, no, I know who you saw. Bimbo was fearfully, wonderfully, beautifully crafted by the Almighty. All the Akiya are my siblings. Bose, Dupe, Runke, <laughs> Mommy, Daddy, Bimbo's siblings, Toei. I can't even go on. Anytime she will come to my home, which was frequent, which she would come in, she would always sit on the floor. I don't know why we never seem to sit on a chair. We would sit on the floor and crack ourselves up. Bimbo was just too beautiful. She could wear different hairstyles, up to 10 in a day, pulling it off and putting on another one. And yet she was so beautifully created by God with natural, thick hair. She was as keen, 
Ewako. You know what they call Ewako? She was just beautiful, stunning. Stunning. She was a devoted and dutiful wife. She loved Kunle with everything she had. She concentrated on Kunle and the boys. And I'm sure you all know. She brought up her children, and you can actually see it. Today, my darling, I wish it wasn't true. Because together we dreamt. Together we fought. Together we wanted life to be better. The handmaidens, we stood shoulder to shoulder for well over 26 years. Not one missing. Not one lost. Even though sometimes we don't agree, we were fiercely loyal to one another. We taught each other life's best lessons. We laughed, we cried. We recorded triumphs, we recorded trials. Out of life's troubles, we tried to bail ourselves out. We rose together. She started a business, and I saw it begin to flourish with her kunle. How much we love you. How much the handmaidens love you, Bimbo. How I wish you didn't do this. How much the Congress soon will so miss you. Every December we'll be together. If she sowed a seed and I thought it wasn't enough, I would just say, go, go, go and get me some more money. The Arise t-shirt. She modeled this for me this year. She was my muse. And I so proudly sent the picture of Bimba holding her chin, posing as only her cold. She was humble. And yet, sometimes I wonder, can you actually see yourself? I was a big sister to both herself, to Bosse, to Duke, to everyone. My ears full on this side, full on the other side, then all of us come together and we are loving. Always of good cheer. <laughs> Amazingly crafted. Bimbo has taught all of us a lesson, which I hope every Christian has learned. She chose to trust the Lord God Amika. It is a choice. She showed us the path of the saints triumphant. Those who will do anything that Christ may be lived in all of us. She was not afraid. May 25th was Larry's birthday. She went with me to VGC, the cemetery. And she went with Shewun to visit her brother's grave. That is Bimbo for you. She was fearless. She never gave herself a thought. She was always willing to extend of herself to others. I saw your heart attic, but I have nothing but respect for you, a gallant soldier. Every woman in this hall, may I ask you to please stand up for this warrior, for this saint of the Almighty God, for this blessed child of the Almighty who refused to deny him, even in times of trial. She kept declaring, she kept declaring that her God reigns, a worshiper, because they that seek God must be worshippers in truth and in deed. She didn't care about your thoughts or what I thought. She cared about only what she thought concerning Amika, and how Amika responded to her. My sisters, I know you do this often, but don't do it today as though you would have done it just yesterday. Give Bimbo a resounding ovation. Just keep clapping to that saint as she marches on the streets of gold. Help me to celebrate a giant of faith, a worshiper indeed, a Christian if it ever there was one. Someone who said it doesn't matter what may come my way, my life is truly in God's hands. She was not afraid of to die. She was not afraid to die. She confronted death and told death, shame unto you. Shame unto you, death. Because our God reigns forevermore. 
If you are sure you understand what I'm saying, please raise up your hand and continue to clap. Let her hear as she sits. Bimba, you have not lost a battle. You have won. You have put Satan to shame. I acknowledge your faith, and we all acknowledge your faith right here. And I know that you don't care what anybody says. You only care about your God. Thank you for obeying God. Bimba is an angel. Our dreams have been fulfilled. She's now a guardian and a custodian of our faith. Can you keep clapping? Can you keep clapping? Can you keep clapping for this giant of faith? Ah, you never panicked. You never for once panicked. You were as cool as ice if ever there was one. You stood firm. 2020, we prayed all through the year 2020, praying COVID away. She prayed from as far away as, as Canada. And there was a day we zoomed in. And she, we were all crying and weeping. Ah, please let me clap for this giant. Women, let me clap for this giant. She deserves a trophy. You deserve even much more. You deserve even much more. Thank you. Aburo mi atata. Sunre o. Sunre. I know Lara is waiting to receive you and has probably received you. I hear the shouts of Ronero. Ronero. Kule, that shout will never dry upon your lips. Satan will not steal your joy. When you remember being born, you remember with fondness. The grace upon your life will continue to grow. You will never leave the Lord your God. Though we may pass through trials, we has taught you to pray and to stand firm. Stand firm, my brother. Stand firm. And let me assure you, you have a family in us. It is not only blood that makes you a brother. It is not blood that makes us sisters. Today, I say to the body of Christ, thank you. Thank you for allowing her to be the Christian and the matter of our time. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ma an amazing tribute. The next round of applause will be fine. <laughs> the next item on the program will be a documentary titled The Angel We Know. But before we take that, may I recognize the presence of our Excellency, the First Lady of Ogun State, Mrs. Bamidele Abiodun. Thank you so much, ma'am. The angel we know. 1973, 30th of August, 1973. What's so special about a date? About this date in particular? The government did not declare a public holiday. The birds did not break forth in a rare melodious harmony. Yet, this inauspicious date marked the arrival of Okweyemi Abimbola Akinyelure ni Fajusigbe. On Thursday, a beautiful baby girl was born in the city of Lagos, Nigeria to Omotosho and Arike Fajusigbe, both from Ikere Ekiti, located in present-day Ekiti State. She was the first daughter and the third child in a family that would eventually comprise of six children. Her 
early childhood was spent in Surulere, growing up with her two brothers, Olumide and Ayotunde, who protectively cared for and tended to their little sister. She attended Christland Primary School, located in Okbebi, Lagos State, before proceeding to the Federal Government College, Joss, Plateau State, for her secondary education. She subsequently proceeded to study accounting at the prestigious Obafemi Awolowo University, Ileife, Ocean State. Fondly called Ronero, she was a dedicated member of the Christ Love Fellowship, CLF, and one of the key praise and worship leaders in the choir, Praise Creation. Compulsory National Youth Service Corps NYC in Lagos, where she worked with Mobile Petroleum. Ecology practice and hair care resource hub providing supports to women and men from all works of life. In addition, she provided consultation and hands-on support to friends and family working towards improvements in their general well-being. Ever the encourager, she was always on hand to help loved ones achieve their dreams. 
Okpeyemi Abimbola, or Ronero, as she was fondly referred to, lived a dynamic and vibrant life. She was a creative, fun-loving, very fashionable, and highly inspiring individual who brought smiles and joy to all she met. Okpeyemi was a beacon of light. She was a panacea for the issues of many. She was grace personified. She was never one to hold a grudge. She would tell you as it was and keep loving you. She was an amazing daughter, a caring and protective sister. She was a loving and highly devoted wife and mother. She was a passionate lover of God. Her faith was the trademark of her entire life. As he transitions to the afterlife, we all, with one heart and voice, say thank you for all the memories, for all the love, and indeed, for the blessing that was her. She is an angel, and she will be dearly missed. Till we meet again, rest on in the bosom of the Lord. Okweyemi Abimbola Akinye Lure, Ni Fajusigbe, 30th of August, 1973, to 3rd of October. 2021. A round of applause for that beautiful documentary. The next item on the program is the exhortation, which is the word, and it will be taken by Pastor Jude Koku. Oh, sorry, sir. We'll take the worship song, So Will I. Um, Nathaniel is around the corner. Can we all rise up as we worship?
time has come to steal my soul we'll sing your praise on it ten thousand years now
sure that God is not good in our eyes but today we decide to declare that you are good you are kind you are more than being lost for words trying to describe Elohim Elohim Alexele we in this service to celebrate the life of our dear friend Bimbo who has gone to be with you. It is through your goodness that we are here to share memories of Bimbo. Though she is not physically with us, we rejoice knowing that we will see Bimbo when we join you, Lord, in your house. We commit this service into your hands and we ask that you take control of everything that will happen in this place. We pray, believing this in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Please be seated. Twenty-six years ago, Pastor Tony Rappu constructed scripted Pastor I.D. to set up the King's Court Chapel. And I.D. conscripted me and others. And in the course of setting up that church, my path crossed with Bimbo and Kunle. I remember Bimbo opted to join the choir. And as, as humble as Bimbo is, she also decided to submit herself to an audition. When she picked up the mic, I was moonstruck and 
In fact, our jaws dropped, and we just had to ask her to take a bow. The message you're going to hear this evening is not the typical or generic message that you would hear in a service of this nature, but a, but a message that encapsulates the life that Bimbo lived and how that life has impacted each and every one of us here. And if you have your Bibles here, I want you to turn with me to John 14, verses 1 to 6. If you don't, I will read it. It says, don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. There is more than enough room in my father's home. If this were not so, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? When everything is ready, I will come and get you, so that you will always be with me where I am, and you know the way to where I am going. And then Thomas said, No, we don't, Lord. We have no idea where you are going. So how can we know the way? Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. Amen? May the Lord bless the reading of his word. When Pastor Shiju shared the tribute this evening, it was a confirmation of the word that I am about to share with you this evening. And this word is titled, Do You Know the Way? Amen? Do you know the way? You see, what God creates, God loves. And what God loves, God loves everlasting. What God creates, God loves. And what God loves, he loves everlasting. I pray you all hold onto these words in your hearts because they are the key and the central theme that runs through everything I am going to share with you this evening. Kule, these words speak a truth to us regarding Bimbo about you and about all of us. These words are true for you today, and they will be true for you tomorrow in Jesus' name. Those words were true for Bimbo before she was transformed to eternity, and they are true for her today in our Father's bosom. If there's anything that helps us overcome, that sees us through death, that sees us through grief, it is God's love. It is a love stronger than death. The Bible tells us in Isaiah 43, verse 2, that when we pass through the waters, he will be with us. When we pass through the rivers, they will not sweep us. When we walk through the fire, we will not be burned. The flames will not consume or set us ablaze. Because God is our Lord, our Adonai, the Holy One of Israel, our Savior, our Comforter, and our Friend. I know the words God creates, God loves everlasting, will not take away our need to grieve, will not take away the dry tears. But as Christians, we all know that we must not grieve are those who do not have hope. What happened is very painful. It is very painful and, and cuts deep. It is understandable because we all feel a sense of loss. A sense of loss that has provoked so many questions. You see, sometimes our grief, our loss provokes us 
to question God for answers. In our text of this evening, Thomas asked Jesus the question, how can we know the way? In a similar way, we also have questions. And I have asked these questions. God, why? Why God? Why her? Why bimbo? God, why did you allow this to happen to such a beautiful soul? Why? I have asked these questions. You see, it is very difficult to comprehend or rationalize God's purpose when a loved one or a friend dies. When life gives us what we never asked for or wanted, it's difficult. When death shatters our world and nothing just makes sense anymore. When we feel fragile, when we feel naked, when we feel vulnerable, when we feel inconsolable, it's difficult to rationalize God's purpose. But the Bible tells us that the Lord gives and he takes away. Job 1.21 He knows best because he's sovereign and he sees things we cannot see. And he knows things we do not know. You see, as difficult as the first question is, and the answer may not be satisfactory or tolerable, there is yet another question. Yes, a second question remains for many of us. A question some of us have asked ourselves aloud and others are struggling with, silently and still struggling with. Why did Bimbo not reach out to me? Why did I not know? We were so close. I should have known. I should have called her. I should have been more persistent when she did not return my calls. I should not have taken it for granted or assumed she was self-isolating or observing COVID protocols. I thought I knew her. I should have seen something. I should have picked up something. Something she said. If only I had figured it out. I could have done something. I would have said this or done that. I could have made a difference. I could have said this or done that. I've thought about this question. I've thought about it. And you see, times like today, times like this evening are opportunities for sober reflection. Bimbo, as you all know, was a very, very private person. But you see, with this burden she was dealing with, I have asked myself, what could have triggered her decision to remain silent? Even with the, those she loved and with whom she was close. You see, she's no longer with us. So we can only guess. Could it be our fleshly attitudes? Could it be lack of genuine um, empathy or sincerity in the way and manner in church people deal with sensitive issues that affect the lives of people? You have a problem. You take it to church. You share it with a brother or a sister. And it becomes breaking news. It becomes a tale retold. 
and retold and embellished. And then you begin to watch a lot of Chinese whispers an open secret. Many people have been disappointed because their personal issues have turned into embarrassments, rendering them socially anxious and nervous wrecks. Many have had their self-esteem ridiculed by careless gossip that give some of us entertainment. Some people will tell you, I will not share my testimony in church until it is 110% complete. I've had it before. We need to ask ourselves, why? We need to rethink. However, that said, we must also remember God's injunction in James 5, 14 to 15. It says, Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of the faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. If he have committed sins, they shall be for God forgiven. You see, this is a matter that is close to the pastor in charge of King's Court, Pastor Ben. And if you're a member of King's Court today, I want to encourage you to really commit this word, this scripture to heart. And to think of two things. The benefits of keeping secrets secret. And two, to heed his advice. Heed his advice that the prayer of faith heals the sick. So that we should not shortchange ourselves of this vital gift of God. Bimbo lived a good life, though short. As I said, I had the privilege of knowing her from the, from the inception of King's Court for 26 years, almost 26 years. He was beautiful, full of life, expressive, dependable, respectful, gentle, always smiling. She was always well-dressed, yet without ostent ostentation, very classy. She and Kule were, were like five and six, shadows of each other, and in church, spirit-filled, serving God quietly. She was a private and deeply spiritual person. So, I was not surprised at her decision. I was not surprised about how she wanted to handle her situation. And that was to trust in God until the end. John 14, the text of our sermon of today, tells the story about the many rooms in our Father's house, about the promise of Jesus to prepare a place for us and to be with us in that place. Bimbo chose a room in the father's house over a bed in hospital. She knew the way. She was someone who was okay within herself. Someone who knew the many rooms of her father's house. Rooms of life. Rooms of healing. Rooms of light. Of love. Rooms of hope, of mercy, of forgiveness, rooms of beauty and generosity. You see, Bimbo knew what Thomas did not know. She knew the way, and she was okay. Bimbo did this her way. And what was her way? Her way was grounded in God's love for her. God's ability to place her in the greenest pasture of all. It was grounded in the everlasting love of God. Grounded in the promises of Christ. 
and grounded in the knowledge that her life was daily being renewed even as her body was dying. It may not be the way we would have chosen for her, but it was her decision, and we need to respect and honor her decision. Could it be still a good dad? But time is controlled by God. Amen? The Bible tells us that to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to be born, the timing and choice of how each one is to be born is completely out of the control of man. Likewise, a time to die. These are seasons no one can change. They lie within God's sovereign will. Because death is inevitable and we all will die. In fact, in Genesis 3.19, we are told that we are made of dust. And unto dust will we return. That without the spirit, this our body is lifeless. Because it is the spirit that gives life. It is our spirit that matters most. And so this evening I tell you, you need to reconcile your spirit with God. Being born knew the way. She knew the way. So she was simply transformed from this life to the next life. Transformed to live with our Lord forever. I need you to listen carefully to what I'm about to say next. Do you know the way? Are you ready if the trumpet sounds? Because if you don't, or if you haven't had a chance today to put things right, do not delay. Do not delay because our days on earth are like grass. The Bible says they're like wildflowers. We bloom and die. The wind blows and we are gone as though we had never been here. Debt is a debt we all will pay. Please don't wait until it is too late. Once again, I ask you, do you know the way? Do you want to know the way? And if perchance you have a in your heart, you have a doubt this evening. Just tell God, Father, I want to know the way. Show me the way. I need you in my life. Accept me. I want you to be my personal Lord and my Savior. Jesus said to Thomas, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to me except through the Father. The way we feel this evening is tough because of this painful loss. But the Bible tells us that in situations like this, we must still seek him. We must still praise him. Even in our grief, sorrow and pain and we must listen to his voice with the ears of our heart yes with the ears of our heart we must listen for his voice when it seems that silence is all we hear we must trust that his voice has never grown quiet and will never go quiet so that we can come to that place in prayer where we can say that we are joining our voices with angels and archangels and the company of heaven. The company of heaven. Yes, the company of heaven. Bimbo's voice and the voices of all those we love and who have died. Why? Because their voices and our voices become one voice 
offering praise and thanksgiving to God who creates and gives life. The God who makes, renews, and heals life. The God whose strong love overcomes death. We must be willing to see more than we think is here. Concerning Bimbo, we must look for Bimbo's presence in new and different ways. Tell stories about Bimbo and speak her name. Tell stories of how her life intersected with ours. Tell about joys and laughter. Tell those ways in which it touched your life and made a difference. Never stop telling the stories. They are the never-ending story of Bimbo's life. You may feel that what I have just said and all I have just said will not end the grief and wipe away the pain we all feel this evening. Yes, I know. I know it won't. It won't undo what has happened. I know that. But the Bible says that we have to find renewed hope and gain confidence that there is a way forward in God's all-surpassing love for us. That there is a way forward even when we cannot know or understand the way. Even when we don't see it. And even when in pain and grief, it causes us to doubt. Life is too sacred. God's way and the everlasting love of God that he has for Bimbo and I, for you, for all of us here, his love is far too strong for death to have the final word. Amen? Bimbo is resting in the bosom of the Father. She has been transformed to, to eternity. Let's bow our head as we pray. God of peace, we thank you for the opportunity this evening to celebrate Bimbo's life. And we ask that you comfort our brother Kunle his children, brothers, sisters, aunties, uncles, and every member of Kule's family and Bimbo's family. Be with each of them every day. Let them continue to feel your loving and strong presence in their hearts. That as they adjust to life without Bimbo, we ask that your spirit will be their constant companion, assuring them of your love and care. Father, this evening we pray that you feel their longing and emptiness. Overwhelm them with your everlasting love. Let them rest in your faithful care, especially in the coming days and weeks. We ask concerning everyone that Bimbo has left behind, that you will meet all their needs according to your riches in glory. God, comfort, let your presence be known to each one. Comfort all of us here this evening from the pain of this loss and take away, Father, the spirit of heaviness. Father, we will live in awe of your incomprehensible love. We thank you, Father. We thank you for your love. And thank you that this death of our loved one, Bimbo, is only a transformation into eternal life. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. God bless you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. The next, uh, next item on the program is the aim two, and it's called "Tis Sweet to Trust in Jesus." Choir.
You lively stones. Praise the Lord. The next item on the program is Tributes 4 and Tributes 5. Tributes 4 will be given by the Foundation of Sapphires, and Tribute 5 will be given by Clusters. To take Tribute 4 for Foundation of Sapphires is Sister Sandra Chime Age. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. My name is Sandra Chimiage. I'm here to represent the Foundations of Sapphires, the women of the King's Court. And um, I represent our leader, Pastor Mrs. Ngozi Akaboize, who is unavoidably absent. Our darling sister Bimbo was an epitome of grace, elegance, and also possessed the qualities of the virtuous woman. When she entered a room, she lit everywhere with her smile and pleasant demeanor. And for as long as we were blessed to know her, she didn't have an angry or selfish bone in her body. She took everything in her stride. She related well in the women's ministry and the drama department, where she was also very active. I want to mention two occasions where, you know, Bimbo was an exceptional human being. I can't even put it into words, the kind of person she was. On one occasion, I think we were planning Father's Day, and I had written a script for a drama skit. And I had sent her her own script. And I said to her, Bims, you have two days. Memorize your lines and we'll look at it after two days. Well, she calls me that evening and she said she had looked at it. She has even memorized her lines and that she had a few things to add. That can we do this? I was just in awe. She was that involved in everything she put her hands to do. On the second occasion, I think she had traveled and um, she had called me to say she was traveling. So we're planning an event and I didn't call her because I knew she wasn't going to be around. But somehow she heard and she called me and she was like, sis, why you won't collect my blessing from me now? I was like, I didn't want to disturb you because I knew you were busy. She said, no, that if it has to do with God, please, I should not, I should not let her lose her blessings. I thank God for Bimbo's life. Her love for God was evident in her active involvement 
in events like when we planned Pastor Peter Lowell's 60th. She did, she went far and beyond what you would expect somebody to do. Her service at all times in the women's ministry, she would always look for ways to go the extra mile. When the news broke, it was like it suddenly went silent everywhere. People were calling me and asking me, and I didn't have any answers because I was in shock myself. We didn't know how to feel. We didn't know what to feel. I think the last time I spoke with her was on her birthday, and she was her vibrant self. We were just all in shock. Bimbo, you were a force who believed that we all have the power to do anything, to change any situation. Her dedication and love for her family was very admirable as she did everything to ensure she was there for them at all times. She didn't have any apologies whatsoever. Earlier this year, she, has, she had asked to be excused from some of our work so that she could sort out personal issues. She promised to be available again and active by next year. But it looks like plans have changed and she took a bow very early. Beams was such a beautiful soul with a generous heart. We will miss her at our panel sessions on Father's Day. She usually had a lot to say. And our prayer conferences in the years to come, we will miss her, we will miss her. Bimbo, you slept and woke up on the other side of eternity. Therefore, we will not mourn like those without hope. So till the resurrection morning, farewell, sis. Thank you. For the tributes five, for the clusters, it will be taken by Mr. Monday. Mr. Monday. Sorry, I'm not Mr. Monday. I'm Frank. Frank Geyser. I came to represent Clusters Nigeria Limited. On behalf of Clusters Nigeria Limited, Madam Bimbo was our financial director. We loved her dearly. She did everything possible for us to achieve whatever we want in the, in the company. We loved her like a mother. She was everything to us. It had been hard for us since her demeans. But as God we have it, we have nothing to say. We believe she's resting in a peaceful place. Our late Madam, Mrs. Bimbo Akinyelure, was such a strong woman from character, personality, and our presence. She encourages us every time. You can do this. And we are always there for her as well. We truly miss her. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Frank. The next item on the program are tribute six and tribute seven. Tribute six is by the in-laws, and it will be Mrs. Ronke Shonobi. And tribute seven, the siblings, will be taken by Bumi and Wole Fajusigbe. Fajusigbe. Fajusigbe, sorry about that. So Mrs. Ronke Shonobi, please, can you come forward? Good evening, everyone. I stand here today to say 
thank you to God Almighty for blessing us with a beautiful soul, an angel in Abimbola, Okbayemi, Akin Yelure. Thank you to the Fajusikbe family for blessing us with this wonderful woman. Opayemi Abimbola Kinyelure. She was a fantastic daughter to my parents. Sir Chief Pius and Lady Esther Kinyelure. She was a wonderful wife to my brother, Ayokunle. She was an amazing sister to my siblings and I. Kuni and Bimbo blessed our family with three gorgeous boys that we're ever so proud of. Didunwa Ulua, Ulua Shei Todu, and Ulua Munumidu. I was so happy when Kune said we should all wear white because Bimbo was truly a light. She was an angel sent to us from God. Her witness, laughter, and smiles, it brought so much joy to us all. There was never a dull moment with Bimbo around. Even when she was unhappy with you, she will let you know. And with a smile and such gentle words, and you will not be able to remain unhappy with her. I remember our first ever no hold back sisterhood gathering we had in July 2021, just a few months ago. Our mom was there as well and all the ladies on our side got together. Bimbo left us in stitches as she cracked us up when she narrated her story on becoming a member of the Aki Yelure family and how she made us work so hard for her hand in marriage. We took it for granted because we were family friends that Bimbo would be an easy catch for Kunli, and we all celebrated it. But Bimbo made us work hard for her hand in marriage. She didn't come to us easy. And we valued her so much. At our last family gathering, when we went to brunch at Southern Sun in Ikoi, also in July this year. Again, Bimbo blessed us with her witness and her charm. And then Grandma brought out some gold, some jewelry, and she said, oh, this is for her children, her daughters. And well, Bimbo was her first daughter. But, you know, my sisters and I weren't going to let her have the best of the jewelry. So we all scrambled together for the best of the lot. And we didn't know that this gathering was her farewell to us. I felt so blessed to have been home in July because before then I hadn't seen Bimbo in about five years because I've been, I've been in Canada. 
So I particularly thank God <laughs> that I was able to spend time with her this past July and truly share God's goodness and his mercies. Bimbo had such an admirable fear of God and was quick to show it to the world. Her faith was her identity, and this was evident in her character and in her speech. And yes, till the very end, she held on to Jesus. <laughs> till the very end. And that is why today, we do not mourn like those that do not have hope. We are grateful to God for the life she lived, for the blessing she was to her family, the Fajusi base, to her family, the Akinye Lures, to her friends, all the groups she was a part of. Okbayemi, as we fondly called her in the family, will be truly and dearly missed by us all. But we thank God for the wonderful memories she has left each and every one of us with. And we thank God for her legacy in Kunle and the boys. Adio, Okoyemi. My darling sister. Till we meet again, always know you were very much loved. You will always be loved, and we will never stop loving you, but we surrender to God. And thank God for the privilege we had to have received the blessing of your life in ours. Thank you all so much for appreciating Okwebi with us and thanking God for Okwebi with us. God bless you all. Thank you, Ma. Please, can we have um, Bumi and Vole Fajusigwe? Good evening, everyone. Um, for those who know, Antioque, this was not the plan. But who am I? What do I know? I was our first son of many. She regaled me with stories of how she changed my diapers took care of me when I was young. When I first heard, I said, why are the best of us taken away? God, why? And yet, here we are. <sighs> Pastor Gide, thank you for your message. While well, you told us to open the scripture, I picked up my phone, you, the U version app, and I saw the verse of the day, John 11:25. And I was like, God, you know why. Jesus said, I'm the resurrection and the life. That if anyone believes in me, though he dies, he shall live. <sighs> and your prayer, my sister, was a real individual in a world of many pretenders. She told you how it was. She didn't mince words. I used to call her Aduru Tieni. She stood behind you. It wasn't half-hearted. It wasn't temporary. She was with you. 
if you had a problem and she was in your corner, your mind was at rest. If she couldn't solve it financially, she solved it spiritually. If she couldn't solve it that way, she motivated you. You left her knowing that the problem was half solved. And it wasn't, she wouldn't see you one month or one year later and forget all about it. You'd say, Wally, how far with that thing? <laughs> she was a peacemaker. She was a peacemaker. It was me. She was the leader of the second tier. When I say the second tier, there was my brother, Bros Olu, our lead brother, Bros Ayo, then her, my sister, Bifa Jantoin. She led us. We played. I remember like four of us slept on the same bed for what I used to think were so many years, but it was just about two or three years. <sighs> she was a God lover. You've heard all of that. She encouraged you with scriptures. You left her and your faith was energized. I saw her last on the 26th of September, and even me who had no faith, my faith was increased. Eight years ago, I can't forget this, eight years ago on your 40th birthday, people were giving tributes and you kept pointing to me, let him speak, and I'm like, I didn't prepare for this. You kept pointing to me until they gave me the microphone. And somewhere, I just said, she's the battery that runs our clock. That if you, she's the battery that runs our clock. She's our energizer. She's our light. She's grace. She's the one that brings us all together. And just last week, I thought, the battery is gone. What is left? I remember one day, some, sometime in the 90s, Antioquia used to be scared of dogs. So we got home that day and we had a dog who was trying to play around her and she jumped into the arms of my dad and my dad carried her and she felt safe. And just what my dad did for her, that's what she did for us. We felt safe with her. We felt at home with her. In her was everything we ever needed. We played, we danced, we had fun, and we also had disagreements. We had all sorts. How are we going to do it? How am I going to do it? I really don't know. She was a bridge builder. She built bridges. I know that impossible is that hasn't been done but that can still be done. From her, I, I, I learned that, oh, if there was a problem, you could still achieve it. It didn't matter how many years had gone, whatever had happened. She... We thank God. Aren't you okay? We are now with Bros. Ayo, Mama, and Daddy. I choose not to mourn. You've left, this life is not it all. You've left to go to a better place. You've left to be the, with the one who created you. So I thank you for the little time we had, for the memories you left, for everything you did, and for the lives you touched. I was talking to someone yesterday and I said, it seemed as if she had about 100 hours in a day. Because the same way she invested and impacted my life is the same way she impacted the lives of so many people. And I'll be like, we just have 24 hours and I'm struggling to find time to do this. And somebody else says, she's done this, she's done this, she was there for me. And I'm like, I thought I was the only one. So this is a testimony to you. You were the best of us. We will carry your legacy onwards. We will do our best. Uncle Kunde, 
I really don't know what to say. It is well. Didu, todu, midu. Before you, there was me. <laughs> Maybe God was speaking. But God is not more or less because of today. How God acts in our circumstances does not make him more of God or less of God. A lot of us have questions. Why? What is? But God is still God. My sister taught me that. In the midst of all, she had faith. She called God. She depended on God. And if anything, I want to say in the midst of all this, for anyone listening to my voice, focus on God. Depend on him. Rely on him. Our stories do not all have to end up the same. But as long as we are with God, our stories will end up the way they were supposed to be. This was meant to be. There's no how I can say it. As hurtful as it is, this was meant to be. It will be one of the questions I'll have to ask God when I meet him face to face. But this was meant to be. The strength to go on from here, he will supply and provide. Thank you all. Thank you. The next item on the program is a special song to be performed by CLF, Christ Love Fellowship. Hallelujah. We just want to worship God because Runero was a worshiper. And even as we sing this song, we just encourage you just to worship God with us. Hallelujah. God, when the 
find rest my in Christ song we're about to sing was one of the songs that Ronero co-wrote and co-sang in those days when we're at Ife at in CLF it was Agape Celebration 1995 and the theme of the song for that year was running the race so a lot of us know Ronero by the song may I please ask for every CLF fight in the hall today to please stand up where you are even as we sing this song together Every CLFI, wherever you are, just please let's stand up. Hallelujah. And sing this song. You can run and you can walk. It's all a step at a time. Hallelujah. Let's go. You can run and you can walk. It's all a step at a time. Don't be weary, don't look back, don't give up. You've got so much to gain. When you're down and doubt sets in, look within you, I'll be there. He's your life and so your race. Keep the faith and hold right through. You can run and you can walk. He's all a step at a time. Don't be weary. Don't look back. Don't give up. You've got so much to gain. When you're down and doubt sets in, look within you. I'll be there. It's your life and so your race. Keep the faith and hold right through. And what is up? Stay at it. Don't be weary. Don't look back. Don't give up. You've got so much to gain. When you're down and doubt sets in, look within you. I'll be there. It's your life and so your race. Keep the faith and hold right through. One more time. You can run and you can walk. Yeah, run and you can walk is all a step up. Don't be weary, don't look back, don't give up. You've got so much to get. When you're down and doubt sets in, look within you, I'll be there. 
is your life and so your race keep the faith and hold up And it will be presented to us by Didu Oluwa, Oluwa Sheitodo, and Oluwa Monomedo. A round of applause for them, please. Good evening, everybody. To be very honest with you, I have no idea what I'm doing on this stage. I honestly can't believe that it has, like, this is my reality, this is what it has come to. My mom, my mom was my, my best friend, and not, you know, not just because she was my mom, but because she was an actual friend to me at the beginning of our relationship you know we used to fight all the time you can ask to my dad every time if somebody was fighting in the house it was me and mom every single time but as the years went by i don't know something happened and we just started getting closer and closer and closer each year until you know it got to the point whereby any single thing i'm doing i have to just call my mom even if, I'm, even if I'm dressing up in the morning, I just wanted to just speak to her, see how she was doing. And you know, she was always there for me every single time. She understood me at my highs, at my lows. She had my time. 
she understood me and she had my time and I, I believe that she was generally the only person who, you know, understood me and had my time. And on that faithful day that my dad called me, I was in school back in Canada and I saw the call coming in from him about 7 p.m. And my dad doesn't, he's, not, he's usually not awake at that time. So I just, I, I, I kind of knew, but at the same time, I didn't really know. So I just picked up the call and I saw him and I saw his eyes and ugh, I, I knew. And, um, you know, I just, I, I didn't know what to say. I was in shock. And for two weeks after that, you know, I, 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 did, I, I couldn't even cry because I, my brain couldn't, it couldn't process it. Not that I didn't want to, but I genuinely did not know how to process what, you know, he told me. And for those two weeks, you know, I would still try and call her. I would still be messaging her, like, Mom, pick up now. Like, I'm trying to talk to you. I'm trying to see you. And it wasn't until we got to Lagos on Saturday. As we got to the airport, as my dad picked us up in the car, we we're going back home. Usually, you know, she would have called. She would ask, what, what, what do we want to eat? What should uh, Mr. Benjamin make for us? And it was then that no call came in, and I realized, yeah. <laughs> oh, he's not here. And I just broke out into tears in the car. We go back to the house. I realized again, ah, mommy's not in this house. And I thought to myself, what, like, what am I actually doing? Like, what is my reason for, for being here? And I just didn't know what to do. And this past week, you know, I've been struggling with my faith because, you know, a scripture that I hold dear to me is Jeremiah 29, 11 that says, for I know the plans I have for you, plans for good and not for evil, plans for hope and for a future. And I, and I struggle to understand how this is a plan for good and not for, like what kind of hope or future is a life without, you know, a mother. And I thought to myself, I'm only, I'm only 21. You know, some people think, oh, you're a man, you're a grown up. I'm not, I'm not so many things in this life that I wanted to do with my mom. We had so many plans, not just as a family, just me and her together. So much, and as she's gone, I just think to myself, that what, what's going to happen to these plans? What's going to happen to everything? I, 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 I'm, I'm in the house right now, it just feels so empty. As I am, I just feel empty. I know I have my brothers here, my, my dad here, but you know, I know they all feel the same. My mom, she was, she was our everything, literally. And I know, you know, we're supposed to love God more than anything, but I, I haven't reached that point in my faith yet. My mom was, and frankly still is right now, my everything. And, um, I don't know what to say. And I just, My mom sacrificed a lot for me. She, she sacrificed so, so, so much. The life of my mother was a seed, a very powerful seed. And she sowed so many seeds in my life. From growing up, she always used to tell me that you will dine with kings and queens of this world. And every time I'd post on Instagram on my clothing brand, she'd always send me, you go, Sonny. I'm so proud of you. My mom and I shared a very, we had a very, strong spiritual connection, a very strong spiritual bond. 
she prayed day and night that I would find a mentor who would help me, help me become a very strong man of God. My mom saw me grow. But she didn't get to see the full thing yet. It's hard for me to cry. I've always had a hard time crying. But when I heard the news, I'll never forget the call. Like Didi said, it was 7.30. My dad called Didi first. And I still replay the scene in my head every night of my dad just breaking the news. Immediately, I removed all my clothes, all my jewelry, everything, and my heart just started beating. I didn't really understand what was going on. The first thing I did was, was pray, because that that's what mom would always do in everything, just pray. I miss her voice so, so, so much. And you know, my mom, you see me doing a lot these days, for those who know. You don't get this without the way my mom raised me. the two most important lessons of who I am, of what she taught me from a young age. Be content with what you have and be confident in your own skin. Whenever my friends would be getting blackberries or this or that and I'd go and ask her, she'd say, no, be content with what you have. And at that time, I didn't really understand why. But now I do. I don't really know what to say. It's weird being in front of you guys right now. Being in Nigeria is weird. I'm sending my friends invites to watch this Zoom. It's all weird to me. The one thing, the most important thing the first thing that my mom gave me, or where she led me to, was my relationship with Christ. And even when she was sick, and we would get together and say, it's not gonna end here. God didn't bring you to this point for you to, for you to go. You're going to be healed. And we share scriptures, we study the scriptures together. And I thought that I knew, that I knew, that I knew that my mom would get over it, get over it and she would be healed. So I still don't understand what I'm doing here. And every day I think of life without my mom. The first time that I'm giving a speech, that I thought I'd be giving a speech, was when I won an award. And I'd be saying thank you to my mom for everything she's done. We always talked about it. Micah chapter 7 verse 8. Do not rejoice over me, my enemy. When I fall, I will rise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. Micah chapter 7 verse 8. 
Do not rejoice over my mother, her enemies. Do not rejoice over me, my enemies. Though she has died physically, she is still here forevermore. Though she has left my hands, she will never leave my life. Mom, I write letters to you every day. I know you see them in my book. Please continue to help me. And please give me strength. You left me in God's hands. Because you knew he could love me more than you ever could. You always told me I would do better than you. <laughs> but you were there to see it all. <laughs> you were supposed to be there. When I release my videos, you're the one I send it to. When I want to write anything, I send you to check. I never went to a proper English school. You sent me to a French school, so you are, you're my only best English teacher. You're my number one mentor. What a great servant of the Lord you were, the leader of men and women. I was shine, mom. I will shine. I will shine. he said there was I love you mom bye mommy Junction will be taking a special worship session to be led by the Bekes and the Paradise Minstrels.
so weary when troubles come and my heart burdened be when I am still waiting in the silence until you come and see
time as we join the heavens with Sister Bimbo. Hallelujah. Titled, My Angel, My Beauty, My All, by Brother Kunle Akinyalure. Thunder, the 
flesh of my flesh. When you passed on, I, I, I struggled. I struggled. How? Why? Not you. Because we know we were expectant. Abimbola, you, 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 you were a woman after God's heart. Strong woman of faith. How can this happen to you? How? I struggled. Then I came across, or somebody came into the house to preach to us. And we came across Isaiah 57, 1 to 2. The righteous perish, and no one takes it to heart. The devout are taken away and no one understands that the righteous are taken away to be spared from evil. Those who walk uprightly enter into peace. They find rest as they lie in bed. Ah, that calmed me down. Then a friend of mine sent me this uh, song we just wrote, I mean, we just sang, and it just kind of calmed me down. And I'm like, you know what? I'm grateful to God. I'm grateful to God for what we shared, our friendship, our love, our wonderful boys, the memories which will live forever in her hearts. Abimbola, you lived. You touched hearts. And for that, I'm ever grateful. Yes, it's a sweeter beat experience, but I know you're in the hands of God. When you say you love me, and I say I love you more, but now I realize that God loves you even more, and he wants you by his side. Okay, me. Oh, you trained our boys you invested time on them, each one of them, and I'm forever grateful to you. you, you as my son said, she sowed a seed in everybody's lives. She was just amazing, amazing. Ah. You'll be missed forever, and Lord. You're just my angel. I mean, that's, that's the only thing I can say, that you're my angel. And what, I want everybody to praise God with me and say hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. When I came into the hall today, 
I was overwhelmed. Tears of tears were just rolling down my eyes, uncontrollable, uncontrollably. And I saw all these signs: love, fearless, God fearing. And I said, ah, "Being boys, all this rolled into one." She is an amazing person. She's just one in a million. And I just thank God for her life. She came, she lived, she conquered, she loved. She did everything for the gospel. And Pastor Judith's preaching today was so apt. She chose the way she wanted to go. Yes, she has been ill for a while. Now, Bimbo is a extremely personal, she keeps to us a very, very private person. And she said, we're going to overcome this. And we prayed. We were in our own bubble. But then, God knows better. She called her home. And I know she's sleeping in the bosom of God's hands. When she was about to depart the heart, this heart, she died in my arms. I saw her go to sleep. That memory will always remain in my heart. And I'm just thankful for God for the lives we shared. I'm so thankful. God bless you all. And I'm thankful she has impacted in everybody's life. Everybody she, she, she met, she has impacted one way or the other. And I'm so thankful for that. She can't, you know, that's why today I said, look, it's going to be a celebration of life. We're not going to be mourning. We're going to be celebrating Bimbo's life. Because it's all about celebration. She's gone to a better place. She's left us here, but I'm sure she knows that God will be on our corner. And for us, we shall be together. We shall be stronger. And we shall do, us, do her proud. Now, this my son here is a wonderful boy. She tells me, mommy has gone to heaven. She's gone to sleep. She's gone to heaven. He knows. God bless you, my son. God bless you. Thank you, everybody. Angel, she's my darling angel. Can you please play that sound for me, please? Oh, you're my angel, you're my darling angel. Closer than my peeps, you are to me, baby. Sure, you're my angel, you're my darling Queen and that's how you should be treated uh -huh. So you never get the loving that you needed yeah. Put a left but a call and you need it Begged and a pleaded, mission completed uh -huh. And I said that I am I this the program Not the touch of me surround with your emotion yeah. But the feeling that I have for you is so strong Been together so long and this could never be wrong So you my angel, you my darling You must be sent from up above And you appear to me so tender Say girl I surrender Thanks for giving me your love Girl in spite of my behavior When you are my savior You must be sent from up above Good evening everybody As I went to my chair And I just realized that tribute wasn't that good <laughs> And I thought to myself ah, Mommy is probably up there She's thinking Ah, did you know you are <laughs> So, you know, you guys probably saw me typing. I was typing out a second tribute because I just knew she wouldn't be happy with that one. So I said, I'm coming back up here, you know, and we're going to do it again. So let's go. <laughs> Energy. Okay. My tribute. I am convinced my mom was an angel in human form. And it hurts me because it's only when she died that I was able to realize this. 
I want to ask for forgiveness for ever doubting God because I know my mom would not want me to doubt him because she devoted her life around God. Her life revolved around him. I will never forget the day. We were having Bible study and we were talking, the topic was about loving God. And she told us that she loved God more than she loved our family. And I was in shock. I was like, ah, mom, what kind of thing is that now? Like, wh why would you say that? I felt, I felt betrayed. But, you know, over time, I realized that, you know, I'm in no place to hold a grudge over God. After all, he was the one who gave her, gave her to us in the first place. And I just want to thank him tremendously for that. But it's just sad that, you know, we didn't get to spend more time with her. You know, we had so many more plans, so many more things we wanted to do with her. But, you know, we're still here. You know, we give thanks to God that my dad is still here, my brothers are still here. We'll still do it in remembrance of her. Amen. And, um... I want to just thank her because she helped me grow as an individual, as a brother, as a friend. And, you know, me right now standing here, I'm a product of everything she did in my life. And I can never thank God enough for that. This wasn't the plan, but the word says that in all situations, we should give thanks. So I say, thank you, Lord. <sighs> my mom, had a, she had an amazing impact on this world. And, you know, as people were coming to the house, I'm looking around, I'm like, wow, there's so many people here, what people have been saying. And I realized that that impact she had in, on, on me, she had it on everybody else and so many more people. When my Uncle Wale came here, he said that my mom was the battery that ran the clock. And now I also realized that she was our bodyguard, our soldier, fighting on the front lines through prayer against all the evil in this world. And although she isn't here physically, I know that she's still there up in heaven. She's still praying, oh, praying constantly with God for our protection. And I thank you, mommy. She loved God until the very end. And I want to let you know, mom, we will continue to love God for you until we meet you again. Thank you, mommy. Love you, mom. Love you, God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. <laughs> Fantastic tributes. Okay, uh, there's been a, um, a change to the program. So before we have the prayer for the family, we'll be having the final hymn, hymn four. And it's called Great is Thy Faithfulness. And it will be sung, it will be song standing. So please, the choir, everyone, please stand. Thank you.
holy stones. Thank you. So we'll now have the prayers for the family, which will be led by Pastor Ido Iluyomade. Praise the name of the Lord. I'd like to um, ask um, members of the family, uh, the Fajusigbe family and the Akinele family to please be upstanding this moment. And please indulge me. Uh, I'd like to sing a song uh, that I know we all know. It's a song giving us hope for the future. And it says, God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He walks in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my guide. Hold me closely to his side. With love and strength for each new day. He will make a way. One more time. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my guide. Oh, he knows me to his side. For each new day, He will make a way. He will make a way. Eternal Rock of Ages, we bless your holy name. The Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, the Lord of life, we adore you. You have said that in every situation we should give you thanks. For this is your will concerning us. So, Father, in this situation, we say thank you. King of glory, we thank you, O Lord, because the Bible says that to be absent from the body is to be immediately present with the Lord. We thank you, O Lord, because we know that our daughter, our sister, our wife, our mother is immediately present with you right now. Father, we thank you, O Lord, for sweet memories. We thank you for a life of impact. We thank you for a purposeful life. We thank you, King of Glory, because before she slept in the Lord, she knew you. We give you all the glory, all the honor, O oh Lord, because her life was profitable even unto you. Father, we thank you, O oh Lord, because she discovered purpose and she fulfilled destiny. King of Glory, we give you glory for this in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we thank you, O Lord, because you are a God that goes ahead. Father, please go ahead of your children. King of glory, you are a God that removes mountains. Please remove every mountain that is ahead. Father, please fill valleys, smoothen rough edges. Be their rear guard. Underneath them, let your everlasting arms uphold them. Father, be a banner of victory over them. King of glory, you are a God that can give us beauty for ashes. King of glory, we thank you, Lord, because we know that you can give us even a spirit of praise and worship instead of that of heaviness. King of glory, we are believing you, O Lord, that in the months and the days to come, you will transform these ones and give them new songs to sing in Jesus' mighty name. That you fill their mouth with laughter again in Jesus' mighty name. You told us that weeping can only endure for a night. But surely, as the Lord lives, joy will come in the morning. Father, we're looking forward to many glorious days ahead of these ones in Jesus' mighty name. Eternal Rock of Ages, we thank you, O Lord, even for goodly children. We thank you, O Lord, for children that are standing on the foundation of our Lord and Master Jesus Christ. Thank you, O Lord, even for the parents. King of glory, O Lord, you are the God of comfort. Comfort every one of us in Jesus' mighty name. Wipe away our tears in Jesus' mighty name. Eternal Rock of Jesus, we just want to thank you. 
We give you glory, honor, and adoration. We pray that these children will be greater than their parents in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we thank you, Lord, because you have promised us that we, you will fulfill the number of our days. We pray that we will not die before our time in Jesus' mighty name. You will multiply the number of our days. You take sickness away from us. Eternal Covetous, we just want to thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you adoration. Father, when we hear from this family, let it be joy and gladness. Eternal Covetous, we soak every member of this family and all of us that are here in the blood of Jesus. We say that no evil will come near us. No weapon fashioned against us shall prosper. Father, we'll go from glory to glory. King of glory, O oh Lord, we thank you, O oh Lord, for that blessed hope that you have given us, that there is a resurrection morning when all those that sleep in the Lord will wake up. Father, we look forward to that glorious day and we'll see our sister, our wife again. King of glory, we pray that none of us will be found wanting on that day in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we commit, O oh Lord, the rest of the evening to your hands and all that we do tomorrow. We pray to bring glory, honor, and adoration to your holy name. Blessed be your name, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated. Thank you, sir. So now we'll be having the appreciation, which will be taken by Dido, and also the announcements. So Dido... Good evening, everybody. I just want to say thank you for everyone who has come out here today to celebrate the life of my mother. God will all bless you for coming out here. I want to thank everybody who's been at our house, you know, ever since this has happened, everybody who's come to just show support in any way they can, whether it's, you know, just giving us water, giving us food, just giving us your time. Really appreciate everything that you guys have done for us. And I just pray for everybody here that you will never lack, oh Lord, everything that you sow, you will rip in Jesus' name. As you leave this place, you will not leave the same way you came, but you will leave renewed, O oh Lord, because the Spirit of the Lord is here and the Spirit of my mother is here. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Dodo. Please, let's pay attention to the following announcements. Tomorrow, the funeral service will take place at the King's Court. The RCCG, the King's Court, that's number three, three, Three Keystone Bank Crescent, Victoria Island. It will be at 10 a.m. Then please, it is very important that we emphasize that the interment is strictly by access card. So please, if you do not have an access card, do not go for the interment. And also, I'm sure you've received candles. Some of you have received candles like this. So please, but Akunle has requested that when we are leaving, we should all switch it on to symbolize that an angel has left our midst. So please, when you're leaving the hall, hold on to your candle and let's celebrate God for a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful soul. Thank you. The closing prayer and benediction, which is our last item of this program, will be taken by Pastor Yemo Adebayo. Hallelujah. Let us pray. If you can stand, please stand. Abba Father, we thank you. You are a faithful God, Alpha Omega, the God of all comfort, the resurrection and the life. We thank you for your presence in this place today. Thank you for being with us. Thank you because indeed your word is true. The memory of the righteous indeed is blessed. Thank you for wonderful testimonies. Thank you because as we look back, we see your goodness and your faithfulness and the blessing even of your daughter to us. 
as a family and as a church and as a people, and we say thank you. Thank you for all that has, all who have come here today. Lord, as we go home, please order our steps, take us safely home. Let's look back on today and remember it with fond memories that indeed you are a good God. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. And may that God of peace, the same God that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you, everybody. Oh!
out of darkness You don't need a man to be the God you are But you have chosen The whole 